Section 1.3 is about real numbers and the number line. So basically, we're gonna talk. The first thing we're gonna talk about what's an asset. A set is a, a list of of certain things. So it's a collection of objects that it says. And mathematics is basically are just numbers. You know, the objects that belong that to the set are what we call the elements. So anything inside the element, anything inside the set is what we call an element. And they are written in in uh, between braces, as we can see here at the bottom. For example, the set of numbers one, two, three, four, five. So all these are the elements of a set. We're gonna write that as you know, see my my braces, and then I put one, two, three, four, five inside. So once again, it's just a list that belongs in a group. So we're gonna start with a, a list of um, a, a certain things in here. The first list we're gonna talk about, the first set, uh, is the natural numbers. Natural numbers are basically the numbers how we count naturally. So let me start my my brace here. The way we count naturally are going to be the first one's going to be one, then two, three, four, five, and so on. Right? Basically, the natural numbers are those numbers that we count naturally. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, on and on. Now, whole numbers, as the word whole, we know it in English, it means complete, no, no, no parts. So we're not going to be talking about fractions. We're not going to be talking about decimals here. No, no, whole numbers. It has to be a complete number. The only difference is the whole number starts with the number zero. Notice that in natural numbers, we don't have zero, but whole numbers, they do start with zero. Basically, they're going to be looking like to the, like the natural numbers. It's just that we start at zero. So we're going to have like zero, one, two, three, four, and it continues. So my little points, that means is that it, it continues on and on. So whole numbers, it's like the natural numbers, it's just that it starts at zero. Now integers, what we call an integer, are basically our whole numbers, but we also include negative signs. Notice how natural and whole numbers, we have no negative signs. So for the integers, so let me start halfway in my list. We're going to start with zero, one, two, three, on and on for the positive values. But I'm also going to include our negatives. So before 0, I'm going to have negative 1, then negative 2 before that one, and negative 3 before that one. And I'm going to put some brackets, some points. That means there's more negatives in there. So integers include positives and negatives. Now, our rational numbers, these are very, very um, easy to get confused. A rational number is a number that can Keep in mind, I'm saying can, doesn't have to yet, but it can be written as a fraction of two integers. As an example, um, a simple way of, of rational is I'm going to use as 3 over 5. Notice how 3 and 5, it's basically they're both integers, so I'm writing it as a fraction of two integers. Another rational number is the number uh, 3, just the number 3 by itself. That is rational number because it can be written as 3 over 1. So remember, I'm, I'm not saying it has to be written as a fraction. I'm saying it can be written as a fraction. Even decimals, ending decimals, what I mean with ending decimals, like let's imagine 3.25. That is a rational, because technically I can write that one as 325 over 100. Right, 325 over 100 gives me 3.25. So it is a rational. Once again, it can be written as a fr as a fraction of two integers. If you include negative signs, uh, doesn't change it because integers also have negatives. So remember, it can be written as a fraction of two integers. So whole numbers obviously are any integer. I mean is rational because we can always put a one at the bottom any fraction will it's already written as a fraction of two integers so any fraction like this it's also the case a ending or repeating decimal so notice how 3.25 it ended there repeating decimal would be like something like 1.3 and sometimes we use a little little segment on top which means it's 0.33333 like that re the three repeats it doesn't have to be one number repeating. It could be two numbers repeating, three numbers repeating, any amount of numbers repeating. But any repeating decimal 
it's also a rational. Now, you guys might, oh, also, I'm forgetting one more thing, perfect square roots. So, for example, the square root of 9. We know the square root of 9 is 3, so technically the square root of 9, I can write that as 3 over 1. So remember, numbers, uh, when it comes to decimals, ending decimals, repeating decimals, and perfect square roots. So that's what we call rational. So you guys might be, well, what about irrational? Irrational means not rational. So any, any number that is not rational will have to be irrational. Examples for irrational are square roots that are not perfect, like square root of 8. Oh, well, before I mention this, the list here for rational, this is just examples. It's a very, very big list. I, I can't really write them all. Now, going back to, again to irrational, it's a square root that is not perfect, like square root of 8, square root of 10, square root of 15. But square root of 16, that will be rational. Right, square root of 16 is rational, but square root of 15 is irrational. All right, another number, it's a... Uh, never ending uh, never ending and never repeating decimals one number that is very very um, a common commonly known pi well many people call that just 3.14 but 3.14 is just an abbreviation in reality pi is like 3.14159 and some more it's a never ending decimal but it never repeats either so yeah so pi is also a an irrational number and then all these all these numbers that i'm talking about all these is what we call real so let me just write for right now all but i'm going to put it inside quotations it's basically the numbers that we know of right now i'm not going to say all the numbers in math are real because later on you guys are going to come to learn something about imaginary numbers but uh, at least these numbers that we have here, natural numbers, whole numbers, integer, rationals, and irrationals, all of those are real numbers. So when it asks you for a list, make sure you, in their case, you're adding real as part of uh, things that a number can be. The way you guys will see it is, um, let's take a look at this. Use an integer to express the boldface italic number in each statement. The lowest Fahrenheit temperature, so talking about low, the lowest Fahrenheit temperature ever recorded in uh, records was 129 below zero at uh, Antarctica on July 21st, 1983. So because it's below zero, I'm going to represent this with the number negative 129. Looking at example B, the shores surrounding the Dead Sea it's 1,348 feet below sea level. So because it's below, I want to represent this as negative 1,348. All right, those are the integers that represent each of my cases. Here it says graph each rational number on the number line. So negative three and a half, so three halves, so basically, I have to go to the left, right? I have, here I go. What two halves make a number? So two halves will be here, but three halves I have to go one half more. So this is the number negative three over two. Once I mean two halves make a, a whole number, so three halves make a whole number and half more. When you're doing your homework this thing is going to be jumping between every number is going to jump twice if you're dealing with halves if you're dealing with thirds it's going to be three jumps in um between the numbers so here what i'm asking between uh, or here at negative two thirds remember there's going to be three jumps between two numbers so i want you to do two jumps i'm going to go one two and it will be about here 0 0.5 is the same thing as a one half. <coughs> so um, two jumps, but now because it's positive, I'm gonna be going to the right. Oh, this number right here was negative two thirds. So 0 0.5, like I said, is the same thing as one half. So 
So I'm gonna go one half. It, there's two jumps. I'm just gonna do one of them. So this point right here it is 0 0.5. One and one third. I have to go one to the right to begin with, and one third means one of three jumps. So remember, between one and two there will be three jumps. I'm only gonna do one. So it's about here. And I call it jumps, once again, because on your homework, you guys will see the jumps on it. Now, 23 eighths, what that means is between 0 and 1, between each of these numbers, there's 8 jumps. I want you to do 23 jumps. So I'm going to go, I know there's uh, 8 jumps in between each number. So from 0 to 1, there's 8 jumps. From 1 to 2, there's 8 more, so that's 16 so far. If I go 8 more, that will give me 24, so it's a little too much. So 16, and then uh, I'll have to do 7 more jumps, right? 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So this is 23, 8. 3.25. Point 0.25, if you think of money-wise, 25 cents is like 1 quarter, which means 1 over 4. So I have to do 3 in 1 quarter. So let me go 1, 2, 3. One fourth once again, once again means one of four jumps, so it'll be about here. This is the number 3.25. And then lastly, four from zero, let me go one, two, three, and four. All right, whole numbers, I, I jump whole numbers, but fractions, I do jump in between the numbers. Now list the numbers in the following set that belong to each set of numbers. So remember, these are my my sets. So I'm thinking of negative 5. And I'm going to do, is negative 5 a natural number? In this case, we talked about natural numbers earlier, and it is not. Then I ask myself, is it a whole number? No, it is not. Is it an integer? Yes, it is. So negative 5 is an integer. Then I ask myself, is it rational? Yes, because I can write that as negative 5 over 1. So yes, it is rational. Is it irrational? No, because it is rational. Is it real? Yes. So negative 5, it's in those three. Then I look at negative 2 thirds. It's not natural. It's not a whole number. It's not an integer. But it is rational. Because it's rational, is not irrational. Because remember, it's one or the other. And obviously, it is a real number. Just let me skip to, uh, let's talk about radical 2. It's not natural. It's not a whole. It's not an integer. It's not rational. It is irrational. Because it's a square root that is not a perfect squared. But it's also real number. Because I said, we're going to be dealing with real numbers only. So on and so forth. So that's this is how basically how you guys are going to do it. Let me continue moving here. Negative 3. It says, neg you see, let me see negative 3 is right here. That's negative 3. Let me see negative 1 is right here. So it's saying negative 3 is less than negative 1. The number line, as we know it, is the numbers listed from small to large. So see how negative 3 is to the left of negative 1? So that means negative 3 is smaller than negative 1. Remember, any numbers to the left of something. So any numbers to the left of negative 1 are smaller than negative 1. Any numbers to the right of negative 1 are bigger. So this is true. I'm going to have to go for true on this one. And my last example, we're going to talk about absolute values. Absolute values, what we do with absolute values is how many spaces away from the 0. So the absolute value of 0, remember, how many spaces away from 0? Absolute value of 0 will have to be 0, because I'm at 0. But absolute value of 5, 5 is here, and I'm asking how far away from 0, and I count my spaces, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So absolute value of 5 is 5. But then the absolute value of negative 5, negative 5 is here, once again, how many spaces away from 0? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the absolute value of negative 5 also gives me 5. What we say in um, real quick is the numbered inside becomes positive. 
but number inside the absolute value because once again we're counting spaces from zero. Now my example D, let me take a look at my absolute value first. Absolute value of 5 is 5, but the negative is outside, so my answer should be negative 5. Like, keep the sign outside of the absolute value. Let me keep this negative, obviously, because it's, it's outside of the absolute value. But then I ask myself, what's the absolute value of negative 5? Once again, on the number line, how far away are you from 0? So my answer should be negative 5. If there's an expression within the absolute value, work that out first. So here I have the absolute value of 6, because a minus 2 happens to be 6. And the absolute value of 6 is how many spaces away from 0. I'm going to have to say 6. Here, for my example g, I have negative of absolute value of 6. Because once again, I did my operation, my expression within first. So a minus 2 is 6. The negative of absolute value of 6 will have to be negative 6.